It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Ezekiel Nyaitok is here with us this morning. Ezekiel, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. Uh, let's run through the pages this morning, looking at uh, the papers, and we can really predict what the papers will be talking about. I'd like to start off with the punch. He says, INEC shifts governorship assembly polls by one week. INEC shifts governorship assembly polls by one week. And that, you know, took a lot of persons by surprise. Commission says despite ruling uh, 176,000 machines cannot be reconfigured before Saturday. Uh, election materials distribution disrupted in Delta, Oshun, Bielsa, and Cross River. Others. Um, these are some of the reasons, of course, that's been put out by the umpire for the postponement of the elections. Buhari can be prosecuted after May 29, says San. <laughs> That's on the Naira scarcity. I mean, it's such a great, interesting, you know, headline this morning. Companies, consumers' taxes increased by 42%, according to the National Bureau of Statistics, MBS. Long fuel queues ground Abuja and neighboring states. I can tell you uh, for sure that that's really the case. National Assembly female membership drops as 11 uh, loss re-election bid. And then you find Songo Lu orders probe as Buhari sympathizes with market fire victims. There's also a pictorial representation to that. There's been a lot of, uh, you know, thoughts out there, but uh, we're requesting that everyone should stay put as the police carry out their duty. Terrorists kill five villagers, abduct 53. That's in Niger State. Very saddening. Uh, that's the much we can take this morning on the punch. Quickly to the vanguard, uh, it leads to the uh, the big story there. Beavers, Beavers has entered the national lexicon uh, forever. Uh, Beavers, INEC shifts Guba uh, assembly polls to March 18. Needs five days to reconfigure 176,606 Beavers machines. You normally uh, leave out those 606. Very important. Confusion heralds postponement. Uh, we hear President Buhari is already in Daura. Is that he didn't know he wasn't aware? Anyway, uh, Peter Obi, others in court, and that is a picture uh, of uh, of that that story. That's a big story. Buhari to Nigerians in diaspora, FG, and placed credible purpose. Uh, fix Beavers or uh, fix Beavers glitches before governorship assembly polls. NBA tells INEC. All right, are they also talking to their members as well? Uh, Lagos Guba, Sanwolu tipped to win based on experience. Uh, that's an advertorial there in uh, the Vanguard. And they've put a chart of who they expect to, to win the election and all that. Uh, you can see LP coming distant third, uh, PDP second, <laughs> and Sanwolu with a wide lead. Okay, but like they said, it's an advertorial. Uh, court okays INEX request to reconfigure Beavers. Okay, um, so the story is on the front page of. Uh, the Vanga newspaper. Well, let's uh, turn our attention to the leadership quickly this morning. Uh, the leadership is not reporting different from all the papers. Uh, you have hours after court ruling, INEC postpones governorship polls by one week to reconfigure beavers. That's boldly written. There are several writers right there, but uh, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, supplementary elections to hold in Dogo's constituency. Army orders 36 car queues warriors and plus helicopters from the United States. I hope I got that correctly. Presidential poll, Tinubu inaugurates 49 sands as legal team. And then you find Atiku meets IBB, Abdus Salami, names Gazama, head of legal team. Save NIPC from mismanagement now, directors tell federal government. Now bandits kill pregnant women, 11 others abduct 50 in Niger and Kaduna State. Now, just when Nigerians were excited, Kofi, you remember uh, the talk about uh, the Nairi redesign and, and kidnapping and, you know, bandits attack. It feels like, you know, uh, activities have resumed in that quarter. Mm. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, we'll move on from that, Mercy, to The Guardian very quickly. Court orders Beavers reset as INEC shifts Guba polls to March 18. So many writers, as usual, with The Guardian will leave it that at that 
Uh, World Kidney Day, 45,000 Nigerians die yearly due to kidney failure. We're in APC, but we'll vote PDP in Nasaraguba poll. Uh, deployment of ICT director, not reason, uh, for Beaver's technical uh, uh, hitch, and their claims. You know, that story is something that has gone on the radar. Uh, but some people have to bring it to my attention. Uh, an IWD, Canadian Envoy, says Nigeria facing a serious SGBV crisis. Um, my son, Badebo, not Igbo. No link with IPOB, says Rhodes Fever. That's his father, um, the lawyer. Or Lawale Rhodes Viva, he had to address the press yesterday. 97% of firms in Nigeria uh, are there to experience tech skills challenge in 2023. It's the headlines on the front page of the Guardian. Well, I think that that's. Uh, the nation that serves up next, yeah. Okay, so we just quickly run through the nation this morning. It says INEC shifts governorship assembly polls by one week, and you can see uh, a pictorial representation. I mean, uh, polls tip as Songwonu. Uh, to retain seats, so you have that uh, margin. So you can see that graph there. But um, let's not stay too much on that. We move away. Why Lagosians should vote Songolu sounds like an advertorial right there. Umahi is quoted to say, President elect inaugurates legal team. And then uh, Tunubu Hills <coughs> Marshall Speakers, G24 Director, uh, don't truncate power transition and see or NSCIA warrants. Uh, 324 House of Representative members elects get the COR, that's Certificate of Return. 324 House of Reps members elect get the COR. And that's uh, the much we can take this morning on the Nation newspaper. All right, so is it clear to, let's start with this um, one uh, from the, the Guardian, where they're saying the deployment of the, or should I say redeployment of the ICT director and uh, not uh, a reason why the, uh, there was a glitch. Um, uh, some people have said that, oh, they wanted to, he didn't agree. Faxon told me he refused to, um, was alleging rather, he refused to rig the beavers and then they took him out of that position. But Anak has come out to say this is not true um, because he, he had been redeployed since the 16th of August, 2022. Um, as the director of ICT at the headquarters, and they transferred him to a new branch to serve as administrative secretary um, there. And this was six months before the election. Do you go with INEC or do you smell something fishy? I definitely smell something fishy. Good morning, Nigerians, again. Oh, um, okay. I mean, it doesn't make sense that for the person that developed um, a software or the, the platform for the most important action that you want to take, the person that developed that software or that platform, six months to the use, to the deployment of that platform, you move him out to come and become an administrative secretary. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up, except, of course, it's on punitive grounds and if that be the case it's either he defaulted you know in public interest or in private interest if it's in public interest you'll be so much in a hurry to make known what he did so as to constantly and continuously gain public you know credibility not not credibility public um, acceptance of the process because the most important aspect of everything you do concerning election is public confidence. No matter how good a policy or a, an application is, except it has the buy-in of the public, is as good as not good. So for you to redeploy such a person six months to the most important action you've got to take in four years is very suspect and you know it made many of us to go back to the background of this person and when you see the profile of the person it's intimidating it's a perfect fit for purpose and the fact that INEC itself had confessed not confessed had made public you know maybe even boasted positively that this beavers machine was you know, an in-house, you know, configuration or it was, you know, it was designed in-house. 
and it has been tested and retested and gone through a lot of you know integrity tests and has passed it's something to be proud of and if anything at the end the person in question ought to be celebrated as a national hero and everything was heading in that direction but it so happens that after Oshun, it became clear that this thing was too good for Nigeria. So the question is, how do we now compromise it? To compromise it, we've got to get this guy out of the seat. This is my own thinking. And because he's out of the seat, others have to be trained in the act of managing the processes. And if your own main concern was that the integrity was too high and could not be manipulated, it means that whoever you are bringing in has to be somebody who's coming to do a bidding. And that's why, in my opinion, we find ourselves where we are today, which is very unfortunate. If we are to talk more into it, I'll tell you why it's more unfortunate than Nigerians know. Mm. The Australian elections were on the 16th of July 2022, and the, the redeployment of this man to administrative secretary in Enugu was on the 16th of August 2022, exactly one month after. Well, uh, let's move now, away now, from sorry. that. That collaborates my story, I'll tell you. Because the way Nigerians hailed the Oshun election, it was, why would such a person, having received such high, we didn't know who he was, if anything, we were attributing everything to INEC. Oh, INEC this is awesome. INEC this is wonderful. INEC this is marvelous. We gave all the adjectives you could imagine to INEC. And then INEC was so happy that they said, guy, look, 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 get out. One month after, think about it. Okay, but let's, uh, you know, look at the thoughts of a senior advocate of Nigeria, Rashid Adegoke, uh, who's, a, like I mentioned, a senior advocate of Nigeria, uh, who spoke on the issue of disregard uh, for the Supreme Court order on the NARI redesign. And when asked the question, uh, what could be done as a retribution to the president uh, for uh, disobeying the laws of the land? And he, he, he said that the president, you know, can be prosecuted. Do you think that the president can be prosecuted, you know, after he leaves office? It probably would be the first. Great question, but honestly, between you and I, that's something I don't even, is a distraction for me right now. You say, how's the bond in the pursue rat for Bush? Whether the man is prosecuted after now or not is a list of the problems of Nigerians. No. The question is, for well, where we are, how do we get ourselves out of this rubbish that we found ourselves in? No, but, 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 but Ezekiel Yaitok, I, I think that it would be unfair for you know uh, us to dismiss that entirely. Because if you look at it, it, it still has a connection. We're talking about the rule of law here. Up until this moment, Nigerians are going through a lot. Now, I'm, when I mean a lot, it means a lot. The uh, short codes and the online transactions are not very seamless, and that's a problem. You can't find physical cash. You can't even find cash anywhere. And for you know, those who have this cash, they are selling it at a very exorbitant rate. And so um, this, according to the senior advocate, is that it's supposed to serve as a deterrent that those who are coming behind. There seems to be a lot, a lot of lawlessness, uh, disregard for the rule of law, especially in this administration. And so, do you think that it would be fair for us to say um, that's not important? Because this is, this is where we are. I mean, we're still bearing the brunt of the fact that, uh, including the, 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 the judges who gave uh, the ruling at the Supreme Court, I'm not sure they're accepting the, the, the old Naira uh, as a means of transaction. Nigerians are rejecting it. Life is difficult. The new notes are not available. And up until this moment, Nigerians are hoping that the president would give a directive, would say something, or the CBN governor. And, and nothing is forthcoming. So yes, again, as a way of retribution, as a way of treating lawlessness by those who should respect the law, do you think that the president can be prosecuted? By way of treating those who disrespect the law, what you should do is what is happening now, get them out. If you cannot get them out now, what makes the prosecuting somebody after, which you know is going to take care, how is that more important? You see, I think we must locate some things where they are now. And Nigerians, if they are hearing me, they should wake up and listen to me and listen real good. 
How many of you have decided to put your heart, throw your heart into the ring to make that sure that Nigeria changes? How many are willing to make that sacrifice? Secondly, for those who decide to throw their heart into the ring, how many of us are really supporting them and looking at issues? You see, why, why I say we should come back to the issues of the moment is because I think Nigerians are really not... Uh, uh, you know, I did a video some days back where I targeted exclusively the elite. You know, when you want to embark on an election like, like I did, everybody's advising me, go to the rural areas, go to the poor, go to rural areas. They are the voters. They are the voters. And they are right. Why do I have to go to people who don't understand the essence of what they are voting for? These people want little money because life is hard for them. But we want to recruit a CEO for Nigerians. And think about it. Who is taking that decision? The rural areas, the poor people. Who needs some money, some cash? You can blame them. So politicians know this much. How about you and I that know better? Who form 70% of those that don't vote? Have you realized that virtually every voting time it's about 30% or less, 30% or less? That is because the 70% either would not or could not, and over 70% of them would not because they are so intelligent to know that votes will not matter. Whatever they will do, they will do. And if this is the mindset, then why do we spend billions of our hard-earned money for us to have the ritual called election? I think the people that we need to talk to at this point in time is the elite, the enlightened people, who should actually activate their 70% base and get into a leadership recruitment that will give us the sort of leadership that we want. It's, it's a conversation that the media needs to come to start to have. How do we recruit a CEO? The mentality is go to rural areas, they are the voters, go to the villages, why will a villager listen to the grammar of architect Yaito instead of collecting the 2,000 of the politician? It's a conversation we need to really sit and interrogate because the problem of Nigeria is not the poor man that has to collect money to survive. It's not a problem. I've come to realize I'm contesting. I, I don't blame them one bit. It is the 70% of the elite who would not get in and would not support the people that are getting in. Now, they expect me to go there and be getting support. You know, there are two ways you get your funding. It's either you kind of go and um, get a sponsor, big man, and it's, a, it's an enterprise, or you say, no, 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 no. I want properly done. And then the closest person that has tried to do this is Mr. Peter Obi. You know, he tried to activate Nigerians to come on board. But that, that, that is being dampened by what has happened with the beavers. That active base that was starting to get ignited that, well, there's going to be credible elections. Right now, the apathy is unimaginable. And I'm really, really concerned this morning about, about what's going on. As a result, we, we are postponing election by one week. Do we understand what that means? I'll tell you this as somebody who is in the field. The man that is an incumbent, he does a marathon. But you that is, you know, coming on, you do a dash. That means you limit yourself largely to a big bang in the last two weeks. And that's what some of us have done. In the last two weeks, we do a real big bang and we're like all over and people go that mentality into the elections. Now we threw in everything we've got. And guess what has happened? With the, the people that have the deep pocket, after we've spent our last resources, have one more week to counter everything that we have said. Where am I going to get the money to go in for another one week? Is that going to come from? Going to come from? It's, 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 it's demoralizing. It, it is destabilizing. It is, it is something that people don't really know the implication of this one week um, delay on account of INEX ineptitude or incompetence or, or lack of commitment. I've always been one that speaks for INEC, always. The chairman, I have been his greatest cheerleader. But right now, mm -hmm. I just you feel so disappointed. <laughs> no, but, 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 right. but uh, just, Kofi, quickly, uh, yeah. he said something about implication. Maybe you just take us through what you think the implication might be or maybe for this election. I'll tell you, number one, 
forget those who are starting to get gingered. Ah, credible election, blah, blah, blah. They are calling me one by one. It's like, architect, don't waste your money anymore. Architect, don't waste your money. Because for them, this last rush, especially with the new CBN policy that they can bring back the old note, it is cash and carry. It's cash and carry. That's number one. Number two, this morning, I'll tell you personally, this morning, Friday, all my staff, secretariat, supporters, you know, that's core, core supporters, you know, um, you know, the volunteer group, they are right now making their way to my office for end of activity celebration. That's what they are heading for. I made sure that there's going to be a lot of food and lots of things to ginger them to all go back home and man their post. What's going to happen to me? Because I'd spent the last, doing the last push and everything, and it came out particularly well. Now, when they come back to the office this morning, I'm going to tell them, guys, sorry, don't go back home. Now, am I going to have that party today, or am I going to also postpone it one more week Am I going to postpone when, when the, 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 the facilities have been already put in place? The cooks have done their works, they've been paid. Now, if I have that bank now to ginger them to go to their homes, how am I going to do again next Friday? Another one, from which money? When I've spent all the money I had in the last push, I have one more week. One more week of doing what? So Telling Ezekiel, stories. Ezekiel, is this just is this peculiar to you, or do you think it? No, it's from... not. It's peculiar to all the non-government people, all the other parties that were coming in as the fresh air, as the hope for the people. That is, you, you don't need to spend, you know, to keep any money. Last week, pushing everything you've got, pushing everything, drum it right in and deploy the people. Like I said ginger them to go back to the field tomorrow and vote so now is everybody the only people are government those in power who have an allocation that has come in again so they can afford to delay salary for one week or anything and carry that money and dump in it and go ahead and undo virtually you know there are certain strategies for instance i'll give you a little bit of the strategy there is one group that is extremely extremely important and that group was to make a statement today in my favor. Do you understand me? And as a result, people had already known because the, the messages had gone down. Today, the government is having, no, tomorrow, a meeting to get that same group and undo whatever it is I was supposed to do, which they wouldn't have been able to because that would not have been allowed. Now, what are you going to do again? Your main strategies, you've not pushed them out because people know election is a strategy game. If you, if you are shooting to kill, if you want to win, let me put that uh, that way. So I actually, it's going to take the grace of God right now. I've resigned myself to the grace of God. Maybe it's just as well. because um, And it's happening to all the new kids on the block, all of them, all the new parties that are coming up that are not the institution's parties. They are all going to have a real hard time. And Nigerians have not yet really come into, you know, supporting and defending them. But I still believe in miracles. I believe that the prayers of the people over the years will manifest because this election is pivotal. Whoever takes it, you can be sure it's taking it for another eight years. Add eight years to your life, you will know that it's something that we didn't have to take a chance on. I'm really, really asking God to help me at this time. That's just what it comes to. All right, uh, Ezekiel, yeah, I took, we have to leave it at that. I want to thank you very much for your time. Lots of stories, but uh, so little, uh, so limited time. Um, we're looking forward to the elections. Um, you're a candidate to the governorship election. Do you consider the postponement as um, a reprieve, uh, or you think the evil day is just being postponed? I mean, sorry, I, I used that, that term. Yeah, yeah, I, I, get, I, he I hear you loud and clear. Like I said in my closing argument, I've just said, it's something that what well, you never prayed for you never prayed for but as a christian the bible says all things work together for my good so from last night what i've been doing through the night is reprogramming my mind seeing the you no know, silver lighting beyond the cloud looking at things more time I could to have campaign done. maybe yeah looking at things i could have done better if i had one more day 
So those are the things that I've looked at. So for me, I'm just turning my mind the other way around, saying, thank you, Jesus. This must have been from you. I'm not going to do this. So I I'm happy with this last question because I was actually almost relapsing to my old um, self before I'm the announcement as I had. But now, <laughs> thank you. I'm reprogramming my mind. Fantastic. And I'm saying, Nigerians, please wake up. All the young people, or when I say young, I mean the new people, their resources are depleted. Run in Nigerians and support them financially to make another push for another closing argument. All right. All right. Meanwhile, President Buhari is in Daura for the lectures. Um, uh, I'm sure that he's just like every ordinary citizen who must have prepared, was not aware NEC was going to postpone the elections. It's all good. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we hope to see you next week and we'll talk some more a few days to you know your d-day uh we'll take a Thank break we'll, we'll take a break and when we come back we'll look at the entire situation with the beavers uh, the court of appeals uh ruling and of course um the matters arising stay with us we'll be right back <laughs>